Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to be looking at AP Psychology Key Terms for 3.3 Gender and Sexual Orientation. So this is simply the definitions and real-life examples that go with this section of Unit 3. If you want to see me talk about the CED question and the essential knowledge, that's on a separate video. So hopefully you're finding a lot of this content helpful for your unit tests, or if you're studying for the AP exam coming up, that's amazing, and I wish you luck on that. Um, if you do, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to keep going with the um, with the content to help you guys along to make sure that you have all the necessary information that you need to do well on that AP exam. So here we go. So the first one I always look at is the key term slide. And these are the words we're going to go through today. We're going to look at the definition and example of each of these words. Okay. So you want to start by making sure you have your flashcards ready so that you can write down the definition and example. Because remember, we've talked about this so many times now, how important it is to make those flashcards, okay? So that you have them and that you can memorize the words and you can get to know the words so you can apply them to any MCQ or FRQ you may get on your exam, okay? Let's start with the definition first The for the definition for sex. The biological differences between males and females, including chromosomes, hormones, and reproductive organs. So for example, males typically have an XY chromosomes and females have XX chromosomes. Gender. The definition of gender is the roles, behaviors, activities, and expectations that a society consider appropriate for men and women. For example, in many cultures, girls may be encouraged to be nurturing, while boys are encouraged to be assertive. Gender identity. A person's sense of being male, female, or somewhere in between. A person who identifies as male may engage in traditionally masculine behaviors, regardless of their biological sex. Gender roles. Culturally defined behaviors and expectations for males and females. So, for example, boys are often expected to be strong and independent, while girls are encouraged to be empathetic and caring. Gender typing, the process by which children learn and adopt behaviors that are considered gender appropriate in their society. So, for example, a child observing that boys will play with trucks and girls will play with dolls and then choosing toys based on these observations. Social learning theory. This is a theory that suggests that we learn gender roles by observing and imitating others and being rewarded or punished for gender typical behaviors. So for example, a boy may who is praised for playing sports may continue to engage in athletic activities. Gender schema theory. This is a cognitive theory that suggests that children develop a mental framework, a schema for understanding what it means to be male or female in their culture. A child may form a gender schema by associating the color pink with girls and the color blue with boys. Androgyny. This is the presence of both masculine and feminine traits in an individual. A person who is assertive, traditionally masculine, but also nurturing, traditionally female, may be considered androgynous. Gender dysphoria. This is a physical condition where an individual's gender identity conflicts with their biological sex, causing some distress. A person assigned female at birth may feel strongly that they are male, leading to some emotional discomfort. Socialization, the lifelong process by which people learn and adopt the norms, behaviors, and values of their culture. Gender socialization occurs when boys are encouraged to be tough and girls are encouraged to be nurturing. Stereotypes, the definition is oversimplified beliefs or expectations about people based on their sex or gender. For example, the belief that women are bad at math is a gender stereotype. Okay, let's look at the words. We're going to look through our flashcards. If you can try and do them without, maybe not because you just wrote them now, but if you want to try and practice, this is where we're going to practice. So the definition and example of sex. Definition and example of gender. The definition and example of gender identity. Definition and example of gender roles. Definition and example of gender typing. Definition and example of social learning theory. Definition and example of gender schema theory. Definition and example of androgyny. Definition and example of gender dysphoria. Definition and example of socialization. 
definition and example of stereotypes. And that's all for 3.3 key terms for now. Hope that you found those helpful and keep writing those flashcards, keep learning those flashcards so that you can apply them to any MCQ or FIQ that you might get on a unit test or the final exam. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe to my channel if you have a chance. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.